We have a major update on the William Nylander contract extension saga, and we'll break all this down for you coming up on this episode of Hatrick HQ. But before we get into it, just want to say we're on the road for 3,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed already, to go down below and hit that subscribe button. But with that said, let's go right into the main topic of the video today, which is... Nylander's extension is very close to done, and as we take a look here from Luke, uh, he reports that uh, Elliot Freeman, uh, he said Nylander's extension could be done as early as Monday, which would be tomorrow if you're watching this on Sunday, around $11.5 million cap hit on an eight-year deal, and he also, uh, uh, Nylander was asked uh, in interview, he said uh, that that would be a dream to stay here. I mean, to play for such an organization, and I call Toronto home. So I think that that'd be a very special feeling. And he, he also said when he asked if he's close to signing, he smiled and said, we'll see. And as if you don't know, William Nylander is on a tear here this season so far with 54 points through 37 games with 21 goals and obviously William Nylander maybe the second biggest name in Toronto right behind Austin Matthews having an incredible year but if you've seen that interview clip yesterday when he was asked if he was close to, to close to signing it really did seem like he's very close to done he smiled and it just seems like he's going to be staying here in Toronto yeah, the big thing is you said Nylander's on a heater. He's on pace for 120 points this year, along with, I believe, it was 46 goals. So this guy has been playing phenomenal. I know the asking price, it seemed like a lot of rumors were saying it was close to 10, 10.5. The Leafs didn't want to budge early season, and they kind of shot themselves in the foot in the sense that this guy is having an absolute career year. I know a lot of guys have their career years going into UFA. They get the big contracts, slow down a bit. But we've seen Nylander over the past two, three years really step up and take over a high scoring role with the Leafs. I know Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, John Tavares, these guys are going to put up points for you. But it seems like Nylander is almost coming out as the most complete player out of all these guys. I mean, you have the best goal scorer in the league in Austin Matthews. Mitch, who has been great defensively, he had Selkie votes last year. This is a guy that's going to put up assists. But Nylander is doing everything. His defense has improved. His scoring has been phenomenal. He's almost at a 50-goal pace. And he's still looking to put up a, a team high in points once the playoffs do come. So this guy is a jack-of-all-trades. He's been outstanding, and I think it's almost well-deserved for him to ask for this 11 11.5 million yeah to me just like in my eyes like from when he started his last contract to now the improvement has been jurassic but as we've seen austin matthews he was consistently good throughout his last contract into getting his signing at uh, this season but i mean when he first signed i think it was 6.925 million uh, i mean a lot of people were skeptical saying why are we giving this guy so much money and now we're talking about him getting 11.5 million the improvement has has been amazing in Nylander's game not just offensively but on the defensive side as well we see him getting into the corners more we see him you know getting into those uh, loose puck battles a lot more and he's improved his play playmaking uh, a lot uh, over these last couple of years here in Toronto and I really do think if you were to ask anybody who's the most improved uh, player on the T T Toronto Maple Leafs she would have to say William Nylander yeah, the big thing is, too, that 6.9, it was one of those things where you kind of sign him, hope he grows into that kind of value, which he went way over expectations, hence why he's at the $11 million per now. You look at dry subtle in... Uh, on the Oilers too. It was the same situation. They gave him a lot. He turned into an incredible player and he's playing at that value. So bringing a Nylander at 11.5 does seem like steep once you do look at just the numbers as a whole, but you need to look at this as well. Tavares is making roughly 11 million as well. Nylander is currently on a contract of 6.9. If Tavares takes a hometown discount and say signs for that 6.9 million, you just flip contracts. The Leafs have built good teams around these guys with their current cap in. So if you flip Nylander, Tavares, just kind of trade the contracts off, you still get a lot of cap space, along with four extra million if the cap does go up to that, to sign another player, say if Max Domi wants a four by four or five by four, whatever it may be, you can use this extra money to still bring in people like this as well. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, well, the, when we look at it that way, it's more of a contract swap between Tavares and Nylander. It's just this next year where it's kind of going to be that overlap, but after that, it it should be easy going, but even after this year, the cap situation isn't that bad. I know Mark did want to bring it up and talk to you guys, so I'm just going to give him the floor here. 
Yeah, so when you look at this, you still have a majority of your line. This would be going into next season with extra 4 mil thrown in. So the team does have 66.4 million used with what's on the screen right now. You still have guys like Minton, Cowan, Abiswazi, Niemela. These are guys that can develop and get into this lineup at some point. When you look at RFAs, you have guys like Noah Gregor, Benoit. Uh, Lilgren, Robertson, Steves, these guys can be signed for bridge deals, cheap contracts, something to make do. I mean, you can use, say, two of these guys to fill up the left wing, bring back Benoit for that bottom pairing, and then you only need one or two players to kind of fill up the rest. The UFAs the Leafs do have two are Domi, McMahon, Legison, Martin Jones, Giordano, Brody, and Bertuzzi. So you can bring in these guys, and you still have $21 million to work with to bring in these players and just kind of fill out this roster. I know the big thing is, is looking at me like, oh, a Leaf skating, a huge pay raise. They must have no money. But like I said, $21 million, you can give Brody two, three, four million to bring him back. You can bring back a guy like Domi, Bertuzzi. Maybe they want to be long-term. They want to be a Leaf for life. I know Max Domi seems like he definitely does. You could bring him back on maybe a 4 by 4 5 by 5 whatever it may be. Bring back a guy like Benoit, Noah Gregor. These guys aren't going to come at a massive cap it, and they can most certainly fill out that bottom pairing and the fourth line amazingly. I mean, we've seen them do it, and they're still young. So I think the Leafs are in a perfect situation. They go for a cup run this year. You go for a cup run next year. And then where it gets really spicy is that third year when Tavares takes a bit of a discount. You have Marner coming in on a new contract. The extra cap to work with, I think that's when the Leafs are really going to get into the territory of really going for it and building this dynasty. Laugh if you want, but I think the Leafs are most certainly going to win two cups in the next five years. Well, you pretty well explained that perfectly there, Mark. Well, like you said, I mean, you could bring these guys in like Cowan and Minton who will be on their entry-level deals. You're getting a little bit of a, you know, a, a pay cut there uh, just, you know, on the cap. And you can spend big money elsewhere there as well if you want to get a big name D-man in. You want to bring some of these guys back like Domi and that. And you can just bring these guys in, fill out the fourth, maybe third line with, with guys like this uh, coming into the league for the first year. Or, like you said, you you bring the guys back who, uh, who have played well this season. I think if they go on a, a good playoff run here, maybe a cup run this season we may see a lot of these guys want to come back since they had such successful postseason but we'll have to see what happens it all starts uh the, the ball's gonna start rolling here when Nylander signs the extension and I really do think it's gonna happen soon you know Elliot Freeman hasn't been wrong very many times in the past so if you're a Leafs fan right now you're jumping for joy because Nylander's gonna be back in Toronto for eight years and over that next eight year window is gonna be a, a lot of time a lot of success and a lot of time to win a Stanley Cup. And the big thing is, I know a lot of people too are saying eight years, this is a long time. If you just look at the past contracts the Leafs have signed, Tavares, Marner, Matthews, Nylander soon to be, they really like to front load these contracts where all the money is almost paid out in the first four to five years and signing bonuses. So this is a contract that you can most certainly trade. I'm just going to use the Coyotes for an example. This is a team that has a lot of players on LTIR right now. They're trying to hit the cap floor without spending a lot of actual money Money from the organization as they're trying to get an arena built so if you pay Nylander say it's whatever money over that span 88 million dollars over a certain span you just pay him the 80 million dollars and say there's only 8 million left to be paid in the past three last three years teams still get that full cap hit but they don't need to pay him as much actual money so this is such a tradable contract if things go south Nylander's 34 with a couple of years left you can still trade this off and get amazing market value yeah definitely and it, we'd like to hear from you guys down in the comment section below obviously we've been covering a lot of Nylander here on the channel I know you guys may be sick of it but this is a huge update here this contract could be done this week and if it's not done this week I expect it to be over the all-star break like we talked in previous videos I think it would just be very fitting for him to sign during all-star weekend in Toronto coming out to the Scotiabank arena with all the home fans cheering his name as an all-star I think it'll be great uh, but we want to hear from you guys let us know down below what do you think about 11.5 over eight years do you think the deal is going to get done soon let us know down below in the comment section but we're gonna get in everybody's favorite topic here and that is comment of the day and the comment of the day today goes to our boy daniel day one supporter here on the channel shout out to you daniel i always i uh, love to see your comments down below really appreciate the support he says am34 has the best chance to break the nhl goal record Go Leafs, go. Uh, 
And if there's anybody in the league that's going to do it, it is going to be Austin Matthews. I really do believe he is the best goal scorer in the league right now. And I, he's on a, a tear right now. And I really do think we could potentially see him hit 70 goals, which would be absolutely unreal. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Like we said, we're trying to hit 3,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate it if you went down below and hit that subscribe button. But... Uh, if you enjoyed the NHL, make sure to check out uh, this video that's popping up on your screen right now. And as always, uh, you know, I've been your host, KC, alongside my co-host, Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.